In today's show, we're going to talk about one of the core PowerShell commandlets for each object. It's a pretty basic commandlet, but I use it in almost every one of my scripts. So I want to make sure you understand how it works and what you can do with it. But first, here's our intro. <laughs> Hi, my name is Shane Young with Bold Zebras. Those guys. In today's show, we're going to talk about the for each object commandlet. Uh, this is going to be part of a series where I'm just going to cover individual commandlets that either I think are really important, or I've gotten a lot of questions about on the channel, or I just want to make a video today, whatever it might be. Um, if you're not familiar with for each object, it's the commandlet that we use to iterate through a set of objects and do something with them, right? Typically, grab some of their properties and, you know, uh, build out information or execute actions and all the you know reports we might get or all the files we might get off the file system or something like that. So for each object is a very handy command line because we use objects so much inside of PowerShell. And it seems like the whole reason we do PowerShell for the most part is we want to write scripts that'll run over hundreds and thousands of files, not just one file at a time, right? If you just got to edit one file, it's probably easier to use the, the browser or the mouse or somehow. But we're trying to edit lots of stuff. Uh, we want to do that with you know uh, sets of objects. And typically speaking, for each object is one of your go-to tools when you do that. So in this video, we're going to look at how to do that. So to do that, let's get started. So switch over to my desktop. And I will open our good old friend, the PowerShell ISE. And you can see that step one I've got here is import CSV and then file.csv. So let's look at that file real quick. So this file is a uh, CSV file that I made. It's really complicated. I've got three columns, right? Object property name is what I called one column. Object property color an object property number, and then the associated values. Um, I made those names uh, for the columns just to try and make it real obvious for you what they are, right? They can be named uh, column A, column B, column C, or column Shane is awesome. Whatever you want to do. Uh, but this is what I went for here. So you also see we have three objects in here. And I did name 0, name 1, and name 2. The reason for that is when you're working with arrays and when you work with most of uh, PowerShell, it seems like, Instead of starting with one, it usually starts with item zero. So I want to kind of get you in that habit and remind you of that. So that's why I named the first object name zero because it is the zero item in the array, right? Cool. All right. So let's import this file. So to do that over here on ISC, we're going to hit the little button, run the selection, boom. And you can see it brought it in. So there they are. Uh, so now that we know that that's a good command, I'm just going to take that and I'm going to put those into a variable called our objects array. So we'll grab all that, we'll say boom, we'll clear our screen, and then we'll type in our objects um, array, like so. And we get the same information back, but now we've got it in a variable. You know, and we can do things like with our variable, like count. So boom, you can see that there are three objects in there, just like we know there is from the file. We're making good progress here. All right, so let's clear that off. Now, one of the things that I want to do here is I want to show you a bonus tip real quick. This doesn't have anything to do with for each object necessarily, but it goes to now that we've got all those items in the array, remember you can always call those directly, right? So we can say something like our objects array, and then we can do a bracket, zero bracket, or square brace, or whatever you want to call them, right? And so that will actually just return the zero item, right? That very first item in there. So we could change the zero to a one, or we could change it to a two. What happens if we change it to a three? There's nothing in the third, uh, the fourth spot, which is the third ordinal number. It's, well, it gets a little crazy. Just remember, uh, arrays start at zero. But that comes in handy because then you can specify this stuff directly, right? So we can say object our objects um, and then dot object property name, and boom. So we're able to return just a property from a specific item inside of our array. Not really important for for each object. Just something to add in the old tinker when you're uh, trying to get your PowerShell skills up there. All right, so square screen. That gets us through all of those pieces. So let's take a look at for each object, right? That is the command that we're here to learn about. So for each object is it name entails, or its name entails, is it is going to do whatever is inside of the curly braces, right? So that curly brace and that curly brace one time for each object in the array. All right, so in our case, we're going to pass it, uh, we're going to type in our objects array, right? And we know if we, when we type that in, what happens? We return three objects. So those three objects, thanks to the pipe, we're going to send over to for each object. 
So that means it's going to run whatever's in this curly brace three times, right? Once for each object. And what's it going to do? It's going to write to the host, right? I'm not going to argue about write host, but it's going to write to the host, right on the screen. The name of the object is, right? And then dollar sign underscore object property name. All right. So this is where you got to learn something, okay? Dollar sign underscore. Well, we know based on the dollar sign, that represents a variable, right? All the PowerShell variables start with uh, dollar signs. But the dollar sign underscore, what we like to call that is the fill in the blank variable, right? Because that doesn't have a specific value, right? If I go down here and type in dollar sign underscore, it's like, I don't know, there ain't nothing in there right now, right? Because it's the fill in the blank variable. So what that means is that when we're running this uh, stuff in the curly brace, it is the current object in the uh, pipe, right? So we know we're gonna run this three times, and so the first time it runs, it's gonna run it for the item in the zero location, right? And then for the item in the first location, and the item in the second location. So let's run it and see what happens, and we'll talk about some more. Highlight that, we'll run it. There you go, so the name of the object is name zero, name one, name two, right? Which matches up perfectly with what's in our array. Name one, name zero, or name zero, name one, and name two. It's hard to start on zero sometimes. So this is really important for you, right? Because this is how you're gonna get and learn and do all the power. You just have to remember that when you're inside these curly braces that this is the current object. And so then here what we're doing is saying, give me, oh, let's not do that. Let's take this current object and let's create one of its properties, right? Or we could call one of its methods because we're working with the actual object. We just don't have to specify it by name or by any variable we preset because we're gonna run through here, you know, in our case, three times. And each time that we run through, it's gonna be a different one of the objects based on where we're at in our list. Kind of make sense? Let's do it again just to see. All right, so let's grab this line. And what do we got here? So our objects array, so dump the three things in our array, uh, pass those three objects over, thanks to the pipe, two for each object. So we're gonna run the curly braces three times again. What are we gonna do? We're gonna say write host, the name of the object is, object property name, same thing we did before, yay. And then dash foreground color, dollar sign underscore object property color. So we're looking up here, object property color, we can see that it red, yellow, green. So in theory, we're gonna write what object we're on and then based on what uh, the value is in this column, we're gonna change the text to be that color. So let's try this one out and see what happens. Exactly what we wanted to happen, right? Oh, put that right there for you. So name zero is red, let's uh, double check ourselves. Yep, name zero is red. Uh, name one is yellow, yep, and name two is green. So just showing you that you know we can call the individual uh, properties from those objects so we have the ability to do what we need to do. All right? All right, let's try one more example of that and then we'll get into a little deeper stuff. So real quick here, I'm gonna specify total numbers of columns uh, equals zero. So this is just a uh, setting one of my variables to be zero. Right, because I used the variable earlier and I don't want to have weird numbers, so set it back to zero. Boom, variable zero, let's clear screen. Okay, our objects array, so three objects, pass those over to for each object, run the stuff in the curly brace three times. Well, the name of the object is our property name. Okay, got that, color is the color, we've done that. All right, now here's the new part. Now we've got a um, semicolon. So what does the semicolon do? That says, hey, I'm done running that line, right? That write host commandlet and all of its parameters, I'm done with that. Uh, so then now go and run another commandlet. We're still in the curly braces, we're still using the current object, we're just going to um, have a new line so we can start something different. And what do we do with that line? We're gonna say total number column equals total number column plus dollar sign underscore dot object property number. Well, what was in that? Well, let's just ask ourselves again by pulling out our array our objects array. So it's a value. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the current total number column, which is zero, and we're gonna add uh, equals zero plus object property number, so 100, okay. So the first time through it's 100. The second time through it's going to be 100 plus the next value is 1,000, so it'll be 1,100, got it. And the third time through it'll be total number column, um, it'll be 1,100 plus 10,000, so it's gonna be 11,100, right? And if that math is hard for you, I have a different set of videos where I teach uh, math, and somebody will happy help you with math too. But 
Anyway, looks like it's going to be 11,100. So let's go back over here. Let's press the button and run that one. So we wrote out to the screen name one, name uh, or name zero, name one, name two. And then now if we say total number of number column, it is 11,100. Okay, so what am I trying to do here? All I'm trying to do with you is reinforce this idea that the ISC is annoying when the column gets too wide, but also that total number column, right, is just showing us that we can interact with that property, right, in a separate line. So it had nothing to do with the writing host line, but we're running that same, um, we're still in those brackets. So dollar sign underscore still the object you were working with, and we can still pull its property names in a secondary line. Good? Good. All right. So now that we did that, let's uh, look at how we do that a little better. Because in reality, when I write some of these scripts, you know, my for each object inside my curly braces, I might have a hundred different lines of PowerShell things that you're going to do. And that would make one really wide column that you probably don't want. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do the same exact thing. We're just going to write it a little different and make it easier for you and I to uh, work with it. And we're going to show some more advanced moves here. So our object array, right? So take those three items, pipe them over to for each object. And then, so there's the opening curly brace. And so then now what happens is we're just going to put all the other lines down here on their own line. Uh, it just makes it easier for us to read and write uh, with it, a little, a little more readable for you. And then just make sure that somewhere, right, right here, and you can see the ISCs help me, right? It says, hey, the it, curly bracket opened here and it closes here. We're in good shape. Uh, so make sure you close them. But so the first line, we're going to write our same line, right? Apparently, I liked writing colored text when I was making this example. The second one, we're going to say, all right, total number column equals total number column object property. So the same thing, we're going to do the math again. Now, we probably want to take this and set it back to zero so we don't mess up. Let's do that real quick. All right. Um, now, you also notice that, remember before we had the, uh, the semicolon at the end of this line? It doesn't matter at this point. So if you want to put a semicolon here at the end of each line to make your life easier, or not that line, but these two lines, that's fine. Um, but because we put them on a separate line in the ISC, PowerShell understands that they're new lines. So typically, because I'm lazy, I don't put the semicolons here, but uh, a semicolon in that location is, it's good, it's bad, it's indifferent. So whatever you're more comfortable with. Okay, so we've got our two lines we did before. So this third line here, we're gonna say if, right? And I probably should make a video on ifs at some point. But we're gonna say if, dollar sign underscore object property number. So if that property number field is greater than a thousand, so looking at these three, only name uh, two is greater than a thousand. Then we're gonna say write host, right? And we're putting these in its own curly brackets. Woo -woo. Write host, this object is bigger than a thousand and then the object property name. And close some curly, close some curly. All right, this should be ready to go. So let's grab it and we'll clear, clear our screen so we don't have any confusion. And we'll run that. And so you can see it did our line where it wrote out to the host um, zero, it wrote out to the host for one, it wrote out the host for two, and it said this object is bigger than a thousand and named two. So this if statement, it got evaluated all three times, right? But in two of the uh, examples, it got skipped, and only in the third or the last pass was the object uh, greater than a thousand, so then it ran. And so that went, and then like we could also check what is our friend total number column. He's 11,100, right, because we set him back to zero. Um, right, and the whole reason I set him back to zero, just in case you didn't get that, or if we run this again, now what is total number column? 22,200, right, because 11,100 was the first number, we added 100 to it, we added 1,000 to it, we added 10,000 to it, and that's how we got a 22,200. So that's for each object, right? There's more complicated things you can do with it, but I thought I'd make this basic video just to get you through the core pieces of it. The last thing I want to mention though is that you will sometimes see, um, let's clear screen, people will take this and they will um, use the alias for each object, right? So there is an alias for, uh, called for each for for each object. Don't ever, ever, ever use that alias though. Why? Why? Because A, we told you aliases are bad. I don't ever want you to use them anyway. But B, the biggest reason for that is that there is a for each alias and then there's a separate commandlet called for each. And so depending on which one you're using, the syntax is different. It couldn't be more confusing if it tried to. Now I'm gonna explain it any further. Just don't ever use 
for each as an alias for for each object. If you're using for each as a commandlet because you're using that as a, in a different set, that's great. I'll make a later video on how to use for each the standalone commandlet, but for each the alias is the devil as far as I'm concerned. So stay away from it. All right. So I think that gets us through everything today. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. If there's commandlets you want to see videos like this on, you know, just basic breakdowns of a single commandlet, let me know. Happy to make them. Um, if I can do anything to help you, write PowerShell scripts for you, mentoring, training, uh, just be your friend. <laughs> just reach out to me and get me out, uh, through bold zeros or tweet to me at Shane's Cows. Um, also, all the commandlets uh, and everything we did here will be available down in the description below. So check that out. Cool. Give me a give me a subscribe over here and have a great day. Me again. Hey, just a reminder, if you want to subscribe, click on my face over here. Or if you want to work together or just need a friend, hit me up over here. Or if really what you wanted was more PowerShell videos, it's probably it. They are over here. All right. Thanks. See ya. Somebody stop the recording.